Welcome back from That Short Break. You're still watching New Vision TV News with me, Ruth in Asedja. We now take a look at the news in business. In business today, the shilling edged lower, failing to preserve its previously made gains on account of persistent dollar buying. Steady demand for the dollar pushed the U.S. dollar Uganda shilling pair higher as importers who had remained on the sidelines for the last few sessions stepped up to the plate, eroding part of the home unit's prior session gains. Ahead of the weekend, the path of least resistance for the shilling still remains lower given the tenacious dollar appetite and little change in fundamentals. The greenback was slightly low on Trump's comments that the Fed's interest rate policy is keeping the dollar at highs harming U.S. manufacturers. The U.S.-China trade stalemate, on the other hand, keeps dragging the market into the recessionary fears with the spread between the 10-year and 2-year U.S. Treasury yields currently flattest since December 2018. The release of July producer price index is awaited today with expectations of a 2.4% reading against the previous print of 2.3%. <music> Thank you, Lynn. We move on to our daily pile of Africa series today. It is the interesting life about the zebras. Now imagine lying down to eat your food and then stand up to sleep. This sounds not practical for a living thing, but for the zebras, it is their way of life. The zebras are herbivorous animals, which means they feed on mostly grass. After a long day of grazing, these single-hoofed animals gather in groups and sleep while standing. Let's take a look. These animals are closely related to horses and donkeys. However, the most distinctive feature on zebras are the bold patterns on their coats. Growing up, every child in their infant school stages is told the zebra crossing. This is simply a place on the road, especially one where there is a lot of traffic, a curse which white, black and white lines are painted, and at which vehicles must stop to allow people to walk across the road. These are interesting color patterns and leave an imagination in a child's mind how and what a living zebra would be a representation of a right of a pedestrian to cross the road as automobiles wait on. But clearly, the reason to this is because the stripes are visible. A driver in a moving car can see them as he or she drives. Likewise, in the wild, these stripes strike. This is because the zebras move in large numbers. The coats definitely add beauty to the Uganda's national parks. National parks such as Lake Mburu and Kidepo Valley National Park in Uganda are the best places you can find the zebras. If you fear the wild, Uganda's Conservation Center and Tebezu Uganda Wildlife Education Center also keeps them. Under the white and black coats is a black skin. Zebras eat mostly grass but will travel up to 1,800 miles or nearly 3,000 kilometers from their base in search for food. Some zebras also eat leaves and twigs. The feeding is mostly done on the move or while sitting. Surprisingly, these animals sleep while standing. The gestation period of a zebra is 12 to 14 months. A female zebra is called a mare. A male zebra is called a stallion. A baby zebra is called a fowl.
For more part of Africa Stories, visit our website, which is newvision.co.ug forward slash follow Africa. Our newspaper, The Sun Division, is also another home of adventures, so grab your copy every Sunday. For Pearl of Africa Stories, we now move on to our special report today. The International Youth Day 2019 celebrations have taken place in Jinja Busoga under the theme Transforming Education for Responsible Citizens and Employment Creation. 27 years ago, in 1992, when the Youth Council's bill was tabled, the definition of youth nearly caused a crisis in youth politics. And the trouble was on the upper age limit of Uganda's youth. Would it be 35, as in the Resistance Council and Committees Act 1987, or 26, as proposed in the Youth Council's Bill? Take a look. <music> Your organ is uh, happy with the whole bill. Tackling the issue in a show on the national broadcaster UTV, now UBC, in 1992, Kada James Nabesha from the NRM Secretariat outlined the bill. This bill was gazetted on the 23rd of October 1992. The age limit which was set for the youth was 26 was between 13 and 26 and the age at which one is allowed to vote and be voted in office was 18 years plus now this bill envisages as uh, the following structure that at the uh, the village level every youth in that village who is between 13 and the 26 is a member of the village youth council. Asked by UTV host Kada Masozera about any contradictions in the bill, David Agre Chibenge of the Uganda National Students Association ably pointed them out and also warned that the youth were getting impatient. Uh, the question of the students' reactions, uh, I think even dates back to 1988 when the students agreed to form uh, a student organization called Uganda National Students Association. In fact, for them, they have everything to gain from this delayed youth bill. Uh, the students have been quite impatient and in various uh, fora in which they have addressed the question of this delayed youth bill, they have put it very clear to government, uh, especially to the responsible ministers. Uh, as I said, they have the highest stake because even the school councils, which are the organs of the Uganda National Students Association, are finding a problem in operating in the schools, such that uh, when this uh, youth bill perhaps is passed, uh, it will legalize the existence and the right of association of the students in these schools. When Radio Uganda's Regina Mutonyi was invited to speak, she also poked holes in the age limit provisions. Indeed, there was and still is an assumption that a student must be a youth too, but as Mutonyi pointed out, a 40-year-old can be a student, but this will not make this aging learner a youth. In the preliminary of the bill proposal, the bill says the age is from 13 to 26. And uh, when we look at this bill and the reality of our situation in Uganda, I think it is, uh, it is far from the truth. Because looking at the educational system we first of all have, assuming that a person began her or his education at the age of six, which is not most probable, especially for the upcountry people, by the time a person thinks of finishing the studies, they, they are already at the age of 26. And I believe that uh, a person to be very effective in this National Youth Council, it's, uh, it would be after school. Because when, from my own personal experience, what we used to imagine at school is not the reality from what we find in the field. Asked whether the youth were happy with the youth bill, Chivenge and Mutonyi stressed the need to learn from recent experiences. 
They warned against tying youth councils to any political organizations, saying they would suffer the fate of similar bodies under past regimes. Supposing the new constitution prefers to change uh, the format, the political structure, and instead of the RSC system, perhaps we have other forms of committees. Now you have already tied uh, the youth movement to a system which is being uh, reviewed as we talk. If uh, the youth movement is perhaps free of any such influences, maybe it can also be beneficial to everybody. Other than a situation where you dread the activities. The youths in this country have had that unfortunate experience. That when you talk of the youths during UPC regime, during Amin's time, during all these periods, one associates the youth with terror on the masses. So they are saying, can't we now sit and formulate something which we can direct? Yeah, perhaps to add on, uh, on, his, uh, on his argument, I would feel that the Resistance Council Youth Wing can be co-opted on, on the youth committee so that he is there uh, as a representative on the committee so that he takes what uh, the youths have discussed in the committee to the Resistance Council. But even the workload would be too much so that uh, uh, if one is thinking of the Youth Council, someone does not automatically think that the Youth Council are being tied to the Resistance Council and therefore the decisions that are being made by the youths are, are, are going to be guided by the Resistance Councils. Concluding the debate, the youth insisted that the youth bill had to be passed before the Constituent Assembly bill, noting that the contrary would be disastrous. Kada Masozela, the host of this 1992 show and Radio Uganda's Regina Mutonyi, have since passed on. James Nabesha is said to be working in Butaleja district. While Agra Chibenge of Uganda National Students Association is now under secretary at the Ministry of Education and Sports. Compiled by veteran journalist Tony Geoffrey Owana. <music> That is all we had for you today. Thank you for watching. Be sure to catch my news updates and other programs here on New Vision TV by visiting our website, which is newvision.co.uj forward slash video. You can also follow us on social media. Facebook is the New Vision. Twitter is at New Vision Wire. Instagram is at New Vision Wire. And our YouTube channel is New Vision TV. Catch up with me on my Twitter handle. I am Ruth The Voice. Thank you for watching. Have a good night. But let me end with a fact file.